Hello and welcome to another episode of Weekly Comic Reviews. I'm your host, a Canadian comic geek, and let's start off with comics you easily walk into. Most of them. First up, we have Bricks Warriors, issue 13, and this cover looks amazing. I co The cover A's from Bravest Warriors, and yeah, there are a lot of covers. Well, personally, I like the cover A's because, well, I love the art in cover A. Uh, it's just it's just that amazing. No, it's not amazing. It's more awe spot. Like I just like it because it really grabs your attention. Here, and, but um, unlike like, like well, basically for, for those of you who don't know, Bravest Warriors is made by Poland War, who made Adventure Time. And if you're a fan of Adventure Time, you're going to love <laughs> Bravest Warriors. If if you haven't already seen it, which is all the episodes are on YouTube. No, I'm serious. It, it's actually a fun series. Hell, they have they have the guest star of the like one of their guest stars is the um both the narrator from the nineteen eighties Transformer movie. Yeah. And he's just awesome. Anyway. Um lately during the past like past five, like this is like the fifth issue in a row, it's been doing one shots. Kinda curious why it's been doing one just nothing but one shots. I was kinda hoping they do well the story arc. Maybe next issue, I don't know. Um, this issue, however, is basically how the team got their energy weapons. The, their energy weapons that look like animals, like, um, how, <laughs> like, they have the animals that look like, well, a bee, a bee, yeah, a bee, a bee, a cat, an eagle, and a dog. And, I'm gonna spoil this for you, like, they, yeah, they tell the or their origins of what the story is. Yeah, spoiler alert, they're lying! All of them are liars. If you've been watching the show, you'd know that, well, basically, all of their weapons come from these stickers that are on their chest. They've been walking around with stickers the entire time. Okay? No, but it is a fun read, just because it's just as, it's just plain wacky, and it, dis and it does scream like an Adventure Time episode. Well, the same art and made by the same guys, so yeah. But though, like, yeah, if you don't mind just being a mind like this, a one shot that really has, really is like that has beginning, middle, end that leads to nowhere. Yeah, I say pick this up. It's actually a funny read. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up, and I bet, and this is. Just as good, and if you've seen my um, some of my er, like some of my reviews, you know I've been reviewing some of the last few issues of the series. FF issue thirteen, and there are a lot of issue thirteens out there. Anyway, for this issue, it kind of picks up where issue twelve left off. So if you just randomly pick this up, you're gonna be a little bit confused, but uh, I actually like it. It actually it's leading up to its conclusion. Which, I'm still disappointed, because I'm never going to see another Marvel issue that goes up to 100. Seriously, what gives Marvel? Ugh. But I actually don't... Like, I actually do like this, because um, they actually do... Tr like, Ant-Man and the FF trick the v villains who's been spying on them, and he's finally getting the upper hand. Like, basically, instead of traveling through time, they travel, well... On the Impossible Man, which Doom did not see coming. And Doom does not please, and basically, well, starts beating the crap, well, not beating the well, basically starts, um, con like, puts more control in his alliance with Annihil- with Annihilus and a, well, <laughs> let's say a kid version of Kang, we all know his name- that's Iron Lad, so basically Iron Lad is now evil, who basically, when he actually came, you came up with an even stupider name than Iron Lad, Kitty Mortis. Of course, he really likes to be called Mortis or Kang, although now Doom just likes to make fun of him, like, well, Kitty Mortis. Uh, so yeah, that, Dr. Doom being in his badass self, what can go wrong, what can go wrong for the comic book reader? Although you do get to see, like, besides, um, like, besides being on a, on a piece of clothing of Impossible Man, which I will say for the reader, because it's just that funny, they actually end up where they need to be, which was the moon, or specifically where the Watcher is. 
And I have to say, I actually like how they're trying to make the Watcher more human. I know that sounds weird because he's a space alien who just watches the Mar the well, basically the main the mainstream Marvel universe Earth. But I actually like it. The show's like, well, he has a girlfriend, and that's actually okay. I'm actually okay with that. Hey, Watchers need Watcher. Uh, hey, even a Watcher needs a life. So, yeah, who knows? <laughs> uh, although, I think the best part is, like, while Ant-Man's trying to figure out a way to basically, well, get his, well, get his, um, get his stuff together and figure out a plan to, well, stop Doctor Doom from, well, from becoming Doom the Annihilating Conqueror. Yeah, yeah, comics are, 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 are just funny with their mouthful names, aren't they? Anyway, besides Ant-Man trying to get stuff together, you get to see the kids having adventures on an abandoned city on the moon. Which is hilarious, because you get to see four ta different time versions of the Red Ghost. So, joy! Another, another story that involves time travel, and it's just as, cr and it's just as crazy. Not as crazy, not as crazy and stupid as Age of Ultron or Flashpoint, mind you. But it gets a little bit ludicrous when there's at least four versions of the guy. We're all going to the same place. Of course, it's actually cool because because of like because of the whole time travel shenanigans. You realize that well, the kids actually do get to grow up and having important adventurous li lifestyles. Like one red ghost goes those blasted boloids, or um, one goes that blasted impossible man. Which is basically a future version of Impossible Man's son, Adolf the Impossible Boy. Who he is my personal favorite character out of the entire series. Uh, he's just fun to read. Anyway, if you do pick up this issue or any issue, these are these are a fun to read, and I like you would be missing out on on this little series of sixteen issues. Uh, sixteen issues. I wish there was more. Uh, all right. Next up. This is a tie-in to, well, it was basically it's a tie-in book. And we all know how tie-in books can be annoying sometimes, don't we? But I have to say, it's still a fun read. Like, yeah, it's a tie-in, but, but it's like a one-shot that like takes place in between issues that, yeah, if you, even if you missed it, you probably wouldn't, like, you probably wouldn't, um, you, you probably would still get the story, you wouldn't, like, We'll be like, I need this issue to understand what the heck's going on. No, um. <laughs> but I would pick this up, sole reason because I'm a fan of both the characters in the book. This issue I'm talking about is Justice League issue 24. And man, if you notice the cover, it's like a reverse version of its first issue. Where instead of the heroes are jumping out on, on a shiny yellow background, it's, well, the evil version, and I like that. Mostly because I'm a fan of, of the crime syndicate. And before you ask, my favorite version will, will be the Silver Age, because how goofy they are. And how much the heroes are actually just such dicks when you actually think about it. Actually, yeah, everyone's a dick in the 60s. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, I guess that's what Super Dickery is for. Ha! <laughs> uh, anyway... This is a one-shot where basically you get to find out, well, basically about Ultraman. And, like, from, well, from his Doom Planet of Krypton. Which, I like this version of Krypton, mostly because they do the one thing I wish most citizens would do. Try to escape the planet! Unfortunately for them, them, Jor-Il, or, yeah, they're kind of like, um... <laughs> Kind of like in the multiverse sort of way, how there's Jor-El and on Earth 2, Superman's cult known as, like, sorry, there's like Kal-El and on Earth 2, Superman's known as Kal-El, just an L. Here, um, <laughs> it's like Kal-Il, like with an I, or it could still be Kal-El, it's just, if you if you make the I have any, because I's can sound like E's half the time, like E-N, for, for example, and that's just and I don't care, and I don't care if people say, why don't you just call yourself I, because that just sounds stupid. Anyway, you have to find out, like, the, like basically a bit of backstory about uh, Ultraman. 
who, who basically, you can see, he is the complete opposite of Superman in every way. Yeah, when he crashed on on Earth by age seven, he burned down the Kent. He burned down the Kent farm with the Kents inside. And years later, he murdered his version of the president, which is which instead of JFK was well, ooh, <laughs> Lee Oswald. Yeah, if you know your American history, I'm Canadian, so I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. I apologize on that. But again, like I I enjoy this even even when Power Ring makes a small cameo, which just shows how much of an idiot he is throughout the entire multiverse. But that's a whole other story for another day. <laughs> uh, for um, I don't know, like the only disappointment is they don't focus on all the members of the Crime Syndicate. Maybe because I think. Because maybe they might be like just saving like each member gets their own single issue, but that thing is great because then it gives more gives us more backstory on why we should care about these villains. Like, like for for Ultraman, we get to see that yeah, everyone on Earth three was evil. Like just evil. Like in, like there were like levels of evil. There was no good on the planet. I think. Yeah, he's, he's more shocked that there are people who are willing to do good deeds for nothing in return or anything like that, or just just doing it to help their fellow man. And my and I have like your two favorite scenes. First favorite scene is that when he goes to Metropolis, well, basically he tries to like like torture Jimmy Olsen to find out if Jimmy was like his Jimmy Olsen, which he's not, thank God. But poor Jimmy, man. I feel sore. That Jimmy can't catch a break, can he? Jeez. And right before he torments, like, well, not torments, right before he murders Lois, because, well, you know, like for this new version of, because, like, because for New Fifty Two, they're got it's most they're also gotta follow um, Grant Morrison's origins of um, of Superwoman, who instead of just being a well evil Amazon. It's basically, it's Lois Lane as an evil Amazon. Yeah, it works. Um, for me. Like, right before he, do, he does anything, they get saved by, not by Superman, Black Adam. And here, and this is my second favorite scene of the comic book. The fight between Black Adam and Ultraman. Even if it is short-lived, it's a, the fight scenes was, the fight, the whole fight scene between the two was amazing. And it does lead into Forever Evil issue three, although I think if you pick up that that issue, which is next month, I you won't be lost. Well, I think probably in two weeks actually. When you think about it. Anyway, you won't be lost by I, I hope. Anyway, if you've ever been reading Forever Evil or just a fan of Crime Syndicate, this is most definitely a must read. You won't be disappointed by the issue. I I love how the fact they're trying to like. Um, like even if you're trying to like use old some of the old stuff from the from the sixties and just spin it in a new way. Like how even like each Earth as Superman's name is like slightly different and whatnot. Like there's just the little tiny tidbits that just that just make a comic work. Anyway, next up is it's also another time forever evil, but it leads to a multi crossover with other titles. Joy. The issue I'm talking about is issue 24 of Justice League Dark. Now, Justice League Dark was a series at first I just couldn't quite get into. Like, I picked up the issue because so it seemed interesting, and each issue just got better and better. No, I'm serious here. It actually got to a point where I actually will go out of my way to stores and pick up Justice League Dark. Un. <laughs> here. Like, it kind of, like, unfortunately, because the whole Villains Month, we had to wait a month to see what happened to the team. Because they were part of Trinity War, and if you, and if you're, and if, uh, which actually led to Forever Evil. And so, basically, since they're Justice League, yeah, you can assume they're not around. Unfortunately, you, we still don't know what happened to them. I guess we'll just find out months ahead, when we probably find out that Justice League was technically alive, or they get brought back life somehow I, my money's on their trap that they're all tra most of them are trapped on earth three who's with me on that anyway 
And I can't really see if you all agree with me on that, but um, I hope some of you do. <laughs> anyway, this kind of story is it's just a John Constantine issue. Which, you kind of wonder why I have that when he has his own book called Constantine. But I actually like it just as the dark because we never focus on the guy ever. Which, for this issue, I think it actually works because he was the only... Because he was one of the few guys who escaped. Besides, um, Batman and Catwoman, if you could read for other reasons. Here we get this basically focus on because, well, because it's so over them who survived because, well, the House of Mystery. Now, the House of Mystery, the sum up is basically the literal sense of, the, like, the, like, the best definition of a haunted house. Which is also the headquarters of Justice League Dark, so nice. But, so, um, for this issue, um, like, yeah, he was safe, he got safe out of the house because, well, he and the house are magically bind because, well, he magically owns the house. And here you can see how tormented he, he is. And because of his magic, you get to see manifestations of him. Also that the house of mystery knows there's something wrong, like, magically wrong. Sorry, magically wrong going on. Because this is apparently a cro an, an, another crossover event. We get we somehow get a slight tip, like um, sneak sneak peek of his new evil thanks to the crime syndicate rival known as the Blight, who like on the internet his costume design actually looks pretty good. But I am not going to hold my breath and say he's the best character ever until I actually see what his character is like. Again, I'm a bit disappointed here that, it's got, that, this, that this is like the beginning of an 18-issue story with under four tiles. So I have to go out of my way to buy, buy not just Justice League Dark, but also Constantine, Phantom Stranger, and Pandora. So, yay, for me. Of course, um, we do get to see a new, get to see, um, John Constantine and a character that only seen once in Phantom Stranger known as the Nightmare Nurse, who is basically a demonic woman who basically is bound to heal the, the wounded and sick. So, yeah, that's actually pretty, that's actually pretty, uh, cool of a character. Thank you, Dan, Dan Dio. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, you can see that John Constantine and Nightmare Nurse need are gonna try and form their own a new t a new league to, to save the old league who's now lost somewhere. He he doesn't believe they're dead, no matter how many times the bad guy's like, oh yeah, they're totally dead. Like, Bullshit, because it's comic books and death is just a revolving door. So yeah, I'm I like to see I like. Like, yeah, I'll stick around because I like to see this new team, which not only has Constantine and Nightmare Nurse, but apparently they're growing their own Swamp Thing. Now, for fans of Swamp Thing, he's not exactly Swamp Thing you know, because, well, he's doing his own Swamp Thing things. That sentence made no sense at all. I'm, I apologize on that. But you get the idea. So seeing a... A somewhat blue version of Swamp Thing being grown out of the House of Mystery. My god, I want to read more on that. And see how things go from there. So, if you want to read another crossover event... You, yeah, if you want to go through two events at the same time, if you are into that... Then, yeah, this is a definite must-read. It does lead in... Because this is a, a good start of, of, of a multi-crossover story. Now, next up, we have, an, we have an, a new issue to a series I enjoy. And I probably, chances are, I probably been reviewing every other issue. And chances are, you gotta, and chances are, because the, the first page might be a little bit confusing at first, because you kind of need to read the other issues just to get what the heck is going on. Well, I guess you you wouldn't mind it so much out uh, the whole awesome fight out of it. The, re the issue I'm I'm, I'm talking about is Larfleeze issue four. Now, um, if you do pick them up, but you couldn't find all the other the, uh, the last three issues, I'm just gonna give you a quick recap. It's basically a cosmic being known as the Wanderer, basically t took um 
well, Lark leaves his butler known as Stargrave. And you want, and basically, I can't quite explain Stargrave because, well, because he got introduced in a crappier series. But I don't think you really need to read into it. Know how cool all the characters are. And Bell's, basically, he's like a skinny, cowardly, non-robotic version of Brainiac. So, woo! <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, the Wanderer, yeah, her name's the Wanderer, tries to kidnap Stargrave. Well, actually, take back because she bought him fair and square. I guess. Her words, I guess. Uh, and Larflees wouldn't have none of it. But, unfortunately for him, she, the Wanderer used her cosmic powers to bring his, to bring eight of his energy construct ghosts back to life. So it's Larflees versus the or revived Orange Lantern Corps. And that sounds awesome. It does sound awesome. And after reading it, it is awesome. I can't stress how... how how, how great the book was. I just loved all the characters, even all the revived characters who wanted revenge to this new character called Dirge, the, um, of all sor like, of all sorrows, who, <laughs> um, I actually like this character mo mostly because, well, she lives on a, like, she basically, her, like, when she took over this robotic planet, she turned into an, a 19th century steampunk world. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of awesome and badass. This comic makes you want to read more on what's going to happen next. Of course, the only downside is you got to have to read the previous three issues just to get what the heck's going on, sadly. But I don't think it's got to be that bad. The, because, honestly, Larkley's, if you're not a DC fan... You're gonna love reading reading this character. He's like DC's version of Deadpool, which I know people are some people are gonna disagree with me on that, but that's how I feel about the character. So yeah, issue four is a most definite must read. Now next up on a series that for the past four issues have not been a, as good, but it's getting it's actually finally getting there. What the comic I'm talking about is Superior Spider-Man Team-Up, Issue 5. Now, for this, <laughs> uh, for this issue, I'm going to have to give some backstory because of events that happened in, in just Superior Spider-Man. Most of your friends will want well, Spider-Man's Doc Ock. Big surprise there. Um, no, but the, the prize is basically due to they're uh, oh, Marvel's wacky time travel shenanigans. Um, Horizon Labs, Horizon Labs, Spider-Man's old job has been has been well bought by uh, Liz Allen and a mad scientist known as Tyler Stone. Yeah, he's pretty much like a gen your generic mad scientist. That blasted insert name here. <laughs> Only oddly enough, he actually succeeded where most have failed. Uh, but, you know, basically, yeah, they bought the company and renamed it Alchemax. And now we know how Alchemax got started. Yeah, the evil company for Marvel 2099. Yeah, good job, Liz Owen. <laughs> and also due to the, the time travel shenanigans, Spider-Man 2099 is stuck in our present. Well, past in his perspective. Which is annoying when you think about it. Uh, sadly, this is actually one of the better time travel stories that Marvel's pr produced recently. But that's a whole story for another time. Uh, well, that... <laughs> uh, well, like, besides, like, Alchemax Dare, that's, they're not the focus of the story. No, the focus is that the Wrecking Crew is trying to steal this particular engine, which is due to, like, like, to Spider-Man 2099's knowledge, is a device that will blow up most of New York. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, they did get saved. By Spider-Man and his new team, the Superior Six, which is basically his te the team, the members of the team, or just members from the old Sinister Six. Which I have to admit, uh, 
It's a really stupid name. No, I'm like, Sinister Six sounds better than Superior Six. Really putting Superior in your titles and everything, aren't you, Spidey? Or should I say Doc Ock? Uh, well, the good news is that he does actually finally teams up with a character called Sun Girl, who Marvel's been announcing was like two issues ago, which never happened. Gah. I'm just glad she's finally arrived, even if she is two issues late. Anyway, besides Sun Girl, who tries to save the day and actually is, has more future team ups with Spidey in, in the next few issues, we actually get to see what the Superior Six is like. Is like when doing good. I have to say one thing: their costumes are freaking awesome. Yeah, each one gets new costumes with the whole black and red design thing, but it works, and I kind of like it. The only thing that's kind of odd for readers is that they're not being themselves. They're, they sound odd, and their actions are a little odd. Like the way they fight is odd. The reason for that: mind control. Yeah. Mind control. So Doc Ock is taking way too, taking a few steps way too, too ahead. Like in the Superior Spider-Man series by Dan Slott, you basically see Doc Ock. He's trying to work his way to be able to accept the new Spidey with, with his new costume, his, the way he he treats villains. Now he has his own army of henchmen. He calls Spiderlings. He even has robots that's spider-themed in the lair. Like, he's trying to get everyone to accept all the changes and and basically don't, don't realize he's actually Doc Ock before it's too late. But it might but be already too late when they start to realize it. Here, for me anyway, it seems like he took a few steps early for mind-controlled villains. And no one's going to like that at all. No matter, how many, no matter how many changes you make. And the, even the villains are going like, he's even more monstrous. They want to basically beat the crap out of him. And I can actually understand why. Like, wouldn't you want to beat the crap out of the guy who's been mind-controlling you? Anyway. <laughs> this is actually a, an act, a really good read out of the last few, which were just okay, I guess. For, um... <laughs> I like to see how this works, like how long this is gonna last. See how long this is gonna last for Spider-Man's team of, of reformed villains, <laughs> which is by Marvel. By what I got from Marvel, will be four issues, including the one I, I I'm talking about right now. Although he's already having a team and and teaming up with Sun Girl. We get to see what the villains are up to. Well, the Wrecking Crew comes back to their boss, who doesn't, ha who don't have the engine, and we get to find out why they were after the engine. For basically a, gen for basically a dumb generic plan to use the engine to bleed the city dry of its money. Yeah, quick get, quick get, get, get rich scheme. That works all the time. And their boss, uh, and the idea to try to get the engine back for Spidey, who took it for safety reasons, and I can understand. And I can actually understand, because that sounds reasonable after everyone was trying to fight over it. Um, <laughs> basically, the, the boss decides, we'll form our own team, the Masters of Evil! So basically, it's the Masters of Evil, with, where most of it's, where it has the Wrecking Crew as its members. Plus a few other guys. I don't know. I have to read the next few issues that come down a month later. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like the idea of villains teaming up to for a single goal. But what I don't like uh, is that they're reusing the same names over and over again. There's like, I guess, swear there's like eight teams with the same name, Masters of Evil. Why not come up with something new? Of course, knowing the villain's name, you get to find out that he's very vegetative. He's not, though. Huh? Say that. Like, yeah, the villain's known as Lightmaster. Now, Lightmaster is a is an old Marvel supervillain whose costume looks much better than what you're gonna find on YouTube when you type in his name. 
Yeah, no, I'm, I'm serious here. It, the costume in the comic is a hundred times better than his original. It looks stupid, the original. So, yeah, so Spider-Man and Superior 6 versus <laughs> Lightmaster and the Masters of Evil. Yeah. Man, I just love their, cor their, their corny na names that are just a mouthful. Ah, uh, that's just me. Anyway... Besides the corniness of the villain, this is actually quite a fun read. So I suggest to pick this up while you still can, just to, well, see Doc Ock's plan eventually blowing up in his face. Uh, so yeah, that's a, so yeah, it, it was a, it's actually a definitely fun read. If you, and also, a, 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 a must for Superior Spidey fans. Now, I'm on to the last, but definitely not least, c comic here for this week. The only downs, like, reason I'm reviewing this one, because during my last two videos, I reviewed the last two Superman books. Superman issue 23 and Action Comics issue 24, because they were part of a, a story arc called Cyrus. And I don't know why they had to put part two in Action Comics, but hey, that's DC for you. Trying to earn more money somehow. Anyway, sorry. Now I'm just rambling on. The uh, issue I'm reviewing is Superman, issue 24, which is basically the conclusion to Psy War. And, wow, this is actually not a bad read. I know some I know Superman stories are a bit hard to read sometimes, because Superman is hard to write. But this is actually quite fun. You pick up where it left off with Lois Lane with superpowers. Yeah, that makes total sense, because it's DC. Uh, we'll just mark that down with stuff that was already done. Now, here, we, like, she has psychic powers. Sure, why not? Who, like, yeah, with psychic powers, even though when she uses them, it looks like a blue version of the Human Torch. I like this, because, like, sometimes Lois' powers makes good, the good, makes good stories. Here, she uses her powers to revive Superman and try, and tries to save the city Fighting Psycho Pirate, with the help of two of two other villain psychic villains, Hector Hammond and the Hive Queen, who apparently is not dead. Hmm. Unfortunately, she when she revived herself, she looks like like one of the Xenomorphs from Alien. So <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of creeped out because besides looking like someone like a Xenomorph, she's basically a peak jerky monster. Yeah, <laughs> that's. Yeah, that's yeah, that's something you wanna buy for your kids. <laughs> no, but I actually like this. Like basically like a psychic battle trying to fight and Superman. Like all, like three psychics, Superman fighting the villain Psycho Pirate. Who because of his plan does scream Psycho Pirate. And if you've seen my other reviews, you already know what I think of his costume. It looks stupid, by the way. But hey. I this is actually quite fun, because, um, for one, you, Superman almost puts on the Medusa mask, which is a definite no-no for, for, well, anyone, and he, and it's actually quite fun seeing how, like, it's actually fun seeing how powerful the Medusa mask is. Anyway, I'm, I almost forgot, what, like, the Psycho Pirates' plan. It, well, basically, is like, it, like, the way to describe it is basically he's making Metropolis go insane, which, well, the heroes must stop him at. How he describes it is to basically free itself from it, from its imprisonment, so it can run it, run by emotions. Yeah, because that makes total sense as Psycho Pirate, though he is an emotional vampire, so... Yeah, that works. That works. I say kudos, DC. Kudos. Uh, although... The ending of this issue, I do like this, because Lois finds out who Superman is, he's Clark Kent, and she finally admits how lousy a reporter she had that she couldn't tell that Superman and Clark Kent were the same guy because of glasses. Yeah. Because that works out all the because that, because glasses are the perfect disguise. No, but it's like, yeah, they. she finally figured out a secret, yet they're still not together. She has a boyfriend, Superman has Wonder Woman, whatever. 
And all in all, this is actually a fun read. This is actually one of the better Superman books. And I know most people say Superman is a boring character or his stories are garbage. Although I'm having high hopes that the writer, that some writers can actually make, can, can actually get to a really good Superman story. Like, um, like, like this one, for example. This is actually one of the better ones. And in basically, if you read the last two issues. And you might find it going, man, you will be surprised. This is actually a much better ending than what I thought it would be. So, yeah, Superman issue 24, it's not a bad read, and it's actually one of the more enjoyable Superman stories, so woot, actually. The only, uh, the only thing, even, I even like the part where it leads to the next story, which... If you've read the villain special Hell-El, or Hell, which I wish someone would tell me how to pronounce his stupid name, is basically leads to story because of his own time travel shenanigans, where basically Krypton is now back again. And apparently the only way to save it is to blow it up. <laughs> uh, that, that's not going to go well. I, I can just tell. Maybe because it's another multi-crossover story arc, so joy. But I still enjoy it, and I will, and I'm gonna have my own thoughts of what Return of, of Krypton is gonna be like next week. So thank you all for watching. I am your host, the Canadian Comic Geek, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>